Hello dog lovers and welcome to a new episode of Top Dogs with Alex. In this episode we have a very very special guest, Chris McLean, one of the oldest Akita breeders, oldest and best Akita breeders in, uh, in the world. Uh, she started breeding almost 30 years ago and um, we would like to thank you for, uh, for offering us the opportunity to be here with you and uh, we, we really appreciate that you accepted our invitation. And um, yeah, Chris, if you want to say something about you. Um, well, I've been in dogs ever since I was 11 years old. Um, I first started um, with, it was a crossbreed and I went dog training to train some obedience. And I went on from there. Um, my first dog show was an obedience show and I won the class. Oh. First time, first show, and I won the class. And, and you were I just a kid. I was only a kid, yeah. And then uh, I started travelling to dog shows with the older friends from the dog club, and I discovered another world of breed showing, and I got myself a German Shepherd, and did very well with that, and had German Shepherds for years. And then I had Border Collies that... Um, I showed in obedience, but then the breed was accepted by the Kennel Club and I started showing Border Collies and I was the top Border Collie breeder in Britain. Really? I was the first uh, person in Britain to breed the first show champion. Um, and then I travelled all over doing uh, Border shows. Collies uh, shows. And one day I was in, I was at the Welsh Kennel Club and I saw this Akita and it was Tamerlane's Veni Vidi Vici uh -huh. from very many years ago and I just thought he was fabulous. Um, a bit different from what they are now but he was a, a beautiful looking dog, big black and white, big thick coat and you fell in love with the breed and I thought I need to have an Akita um, but way back then they were very very expensive um, and hard to and get hard one to get. there was none available and it took me a few years before I actually got one and uh, when I got this Akita my husband said oh these are too big <laughs> stick to the collies and I says I just want one so of course um, when I got one, I had to have more, and <laughs> I bred the bitch that I got. She was very well bred. The she first was one was from USA or a no, dog from no, UK? She, she actually, I bought her in Scotland from a, a friend of mine, a Rena Carrigan. She breeds Pomeranians now, and she had um, a bitch that she bought from Redwich, and the father of this bitch was champion Goshen's bigger is better oh nice and he she was my first Akita and I did very well with her at the shows she only got a reserve CC but the judging and things were different back then and uh, but she bred me some champions and that was how I was first introduced to Akita but is she the stone of your kennel or which one no, would you say when, when I, I actually lost that female um, when she was seven years old um, so we kind of lost that line but I did stick with some of the Redwich lines because at that time um, I preferred what they were doing to everybody else and I I bought um, I bought a few bitches from them uh, the best one being a uh, Redwich eye catching or what at Melador she was the litter sister to the Killalee's top stud dog, JC, and uh, she was a very good producer for me. Um, and she produced about five champions uh, in different countries over the years. Um, and then I bred on from uh, two of the bitches that I kept, Mamacita, champion Mamacita, and the uh, international champion Melador Frias from Evil. That was Gracie and Emma. And they produced a uh, Mamacita produced champion uh, hotter than hell. This was one of my yeah. favorite dogs, oh, honestly. She was, <laughs> just, she was just amazing. Um, and 
that bitch line that I had uh, produced the uh, Melador Heart of Gold and down to Melador the Goddess all through from those bitches um, and all prepotent and you know the breeding lines yeah yeah um, also uh, Heart of Gold she produced my champion dog Rex and another great dog another <laughs> uh, he's he's a I think Rex must be the best male I ever think, that I've ever bred I'm sure I've bred other champion males you know but I think to me he's the best you know he has the size the substance the bone and which female do you think was the best um well here so it's harder to say it's hard to say <laughs> because, because they are had head so to head. many uh, you know hotter than hell was really special yeah, yeah. you know and she won at the world shows and yeah uh, she was in europe for a yes, while that yes, we all know yes, her in europe yeah. and she um, won a lot yeah another one that was in europe uh, was um handled by fabrizio manny yes for a long time and that was a cha international champion melador burnowich and she conquered europe yeah she did yeah, years ago and fabrizio did a great job with her so um i've had some good success with the dogs over the yes, years yes you did yeah, you yeah. did you definitely yeah. did so um and what do you think about the way the breed involved since since you started breeding since yes. it was introduced in the uk well to be honest when i look back at some of the pictures of the dogs that we first started out with uh, the breed has improved immensely uh, first of all character um, when I first started, the character was uh, very sharp, you know. Um, You'd say like more aggressive? Yes, or? more aggressive, hard to handle. Um, and I think the breeders have done a great job to tone that down. Um, but still the dogs have got the, the proper characters. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, the, another improvement is that um, hind angulation. Uh, years ago, there was so many straight. dogs with too straight, and it made them have popping hocks, which is a terrible thing in the breed. So, um, I think the breeders have been trying a wee bit. I know it says moderate angles, but I always think a wee bit more because when you get too moderate and you get start getting too straight, you start getting the popping hocks back. So I think you need slightly a wee bit more angles. Um, Another thing was, at one point in the breed, over the years I've been doing it, the breed started getting smaller, you know, and they're meant to be large, powerful, yeah, you know, yeah. strong boned, you know, um, and with a good coat on them. And I felt that a lot of the dogs were getting smaller. Um, I mean, recently I've had judges, all-rounders mostly, say, Oh, your dog's too much for me. <laughs> but but the standard says you know, that the standard Akita is, is a big, large, powerful, powerful dog. dog. Yeah. You know, and if <laughs> if these uh, and if these judges, the all rounders, are asking breeders to breed smaller dogs, that's not what we need to do. We need to breed to the breed standard, and not adjust things for for the, the all rounder judges that think oh they're too big. They're meant to be big. <laughs> You know, um, and although they're big, they still need to have the good movement, you know, which I think that, uh, you know, I've managed to, to keep in my dogs. So I think movement as well is important. Um, but I do think that uh, they have improved a lot since so I So it has started. improved in a good way. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. There's been many nice dogs uh, over the years, you know. Um, so... Yeah, I think that's, that's that's good. Yeah, that's good to hear. So I'm gonna um, now we are going to move to the next question, and I'm gonna ask Chris which dogs impressed her the most from her breeding, but also stud dogs from abroad or from other breedings in the 90s, in the 2000s, in the 2010, and then 2020s. So you can start with whichever you want, but it's important to mention also dogs from your breeding yes. and also dogs from other breeders. Yes, of course. Well, in the 90s, um, probably Regalia kennels um, were 
the ones that I liked, uh, she had some great dogs, uh, Regalia's Dark Wolf and Eagle and these, these were the uh, dogs that I admired from obviously from afar and I used to buy the Akita World. Um, At the time you didn't yes. manage to go to, yes. to USA to see we them? Didn't, didn't get to the USA until we went to the National uh, in the 2000s um, and we went hoping to see some of the special dogs that we've seen in the magazines. Um, particularly we went to see a Raja and we were sitting at the ringside beside this American man and he said, oh, where are you from? And I said, well, I'm from Scotland. Matthew was there. He said, oh, I'm from England. And he said, so if you come to see any special dogs? And we said, well, the main dog that we've come to see is Raja. And we said, do you know if the owner is here? Because we, we, we can't and find And I even them. didn't know who we, was the owner. No, we didn't know. We just <laughs> wanted to see the dog, we said. So the man said, oh, well, you want to see Raja? He said, do you like this dog? And we said, oh, we love him. He's got great type and we love his colour and we love everything about him. We'd love to see him. And he said, oh, I'm sorry to tell you, he's not here. And we went, oh, we were really disappointed. He said, but his owner's here. And we said, oh, really? I said, could you introduce us to him? And he says, my name's Dave Osborne. <laughs> so that was our introduction to Dave Osborne. And we later went on to, to buy a beautiful female from Dave Osborne um, out of Raja. And uh, her name was Venus. Uh, so she became a champion. Uh, Matthew and I owned her between us. And she became a champion and she won about 10 cc's oh um, and she did very well but unfortunately she took a pyometra and uh, we never actually got any puppies from her oh so you didn't so that her. was a shame um, but she was a beautiful dog and she was from Raja and um, in the 2000s which dogs impressed you the most well Matthew Bostock had a beautiful female um, Ruth Dale's personal vendetta and she was very beautiful and Matthew won just about everything with that bitch um, and then he took her over to America and had her mated and came back and he had some beautiful puppies um, one of one of my um, favorite dogs also from the 2000s was Ruth Dale's regime change uh, he was a large, powerful dog, um, great bone, good angles, and he had a beautiful temperament, and I really liked this dog. I used him myself and produced champions to my own bitch. Um, so these, these were dogs from the 2000s. Um, then from the 2010? 2010 would probably be um, Ruth Dale's Notorious. Yeah, um, Biggie. Biggie, he was a, a large red and white dog, very nice dog, powerful. Um, again, you used him. I used him at stud and produced the, my champions from him as well. Um, he was just amazing, a beautiful dog, um, and he was sound. You know, sometimes people say the larger dogs are not sound, but he was a big sound dog and he, I think he gave a lot to the breed. Um, I also liked, I'm not sure what year it was, a RAR, champion yeah. Ruth Dale's Ready to Rule. He was another fabulous dog that I loved. Um, large, powerful, good angles, great temperament. Um, Matthew produced some beautiful dogs. Yeah, he does. He does, yeah. And, <laughs> and thanks to him, he, you know, I was allowed to use some of these stud dogs and I used RAR as well and produced more champions so his lines and my lines seem to work yeah. together very yeah, well. we can see this. Yeah so um, yeah so he was one of my one of my favorites so. Do you have any dog in 2020s like uh, okay in the last five years let's say? Yeah the last five years well um, hard to say uh, probably I've got to mention my own dog, Rex. 
Yeah, but champion, he's a good dog. Yeah, Melador, really long held, nice. broke loose. Um, he he is large, powerful. He's got great bone. He's got a lovely coat, and he's, he's just he's as sound as anything. He, his movement is to die for if I could keep up with him, you know, because he's he's big and strong. And the thing I like about him is he's a great producer. He's produced champions all over the world, um, and and that's to most of the most bloodlines. He's a good producer. Um, of course, he comes from my very good bitch line and Heart of Gold. But he was yeah, here I would like to ask you if you could tell me, like in the 90s, not in the 90s, like four or five bitches or dogs from your line, which you think that were yeah. the best, like the ones that you consider it would be good to be mentioned. Yeah, well, obviously, um, Heart of Gold, she's Rex's mother, yeah. and she's a good producer. She produced a few champions as well. Um, I think it's five champions. Melador Hotter Than Hell, um, one of my best producers. Um, everything she produced was, you know, good, good. bone size. Yeah. She had everything. The puppies went to mostly show homes and all over the world and became champions. Um, and unfortunately, Melador, the goddess, she took a payo and I didn't get to breed her. But she was beautiful and he, she still is because I've yeah. still got her. Oh, you still um, have she, her? Yeah, she's retired now. Um, but she won all over as well. She won in Europe. She was an Irish champion um, and obviously a British champion. So she was a, she was one of my favourites as well. My bitch line was very good. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I just we know. Them and I've got some really nice stuff from them. And could you mention some breeders that impressed you most over the years? Yeah. If we talk over yes. the last 30 years, yeah. not... Well, when I first started, uh, it was the Killalees with the, the Red Witch Kennels that I turned to to start my kennel because at that time I, I watched all the shows and the judging and it was always their dogs that I liked and so I started with their lines and I did some good breedings with some of their dogs. Um, I used Rave, if uh, people will remember him, Red Witch Dancing in the Dark. I used Rave and got some nice stuff from him as well. Um, but to be honest, it was Matthew Bostock who impressed me most. Um, he started out very young. I met him first when he was 14 <laughs> years old and his enthusiasm and love for the breed has never died. He's got great determination and he's got great vision with his breedings. And I think he, over the years, he's been consistent. I think he, overall, he has um, he's kept his enthusiasm and he just, he just loves the breed. Yeah, he and did a lot he's, for the he's breed. He's done a lot for the breed. He's improved the breed. And um, I, I just think one of the top kennels in the world at the minute is produced champions all over the world um, and from all different bloodlines as well. And yeah, and I think as a young boy, he's done, <laughs> he's done great to come this far and still be doing it. So yeah, he, he's my top. Yeah. I'm happy to yeah. hear this. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy to do. I think he does very well, and I know he's working with you now. Yes, we're and working. You have bred some beautiful dogs, and uh, the future Thank you. the future looks good. The Thank future you. looks good for you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As a judge, uh, over the years, which period of time do you think it was? Would you class as the best, and why? Um. Well. I think over the years um, the breed has improved, so I would say um, maybe in the last 10 years the breed has improved um, the, most. And the most and I think there's been um, a lot of nice dogs produced in that era. Um, so yeah, I would think around about the, the you know, 2000, between 10, 10 and, and 15, 20, yeah. between 10 and 20 I think the breed was better. Um, 
I think breeders have to, in, in the future, watch that they don't lose the size. They need to, you know, try and breed a bit more for size and substance. Um, and they can keep on the right track if they do that. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think that the was the 2010, best time. Yeah, 2010, yeah, there's been a lot of nice years. dogs in those years, yes. That's good to know, it's close to us. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, the breed has evolved. Yeah. And I think it's evolved in a good way, you know, for certain aspects in the in the breed. So I would say, yeah, yeah. that was the Super. years. Yeah. Super. How do you think the club society can improve and help people, new people, come into the breed? Well, I do think that um, the breed clubs need to encourage young people to come into the breed. Um, because obviously we need the young people as the older people, you know. So we need we need young people to come in, um, and sometimes it starts with junior handling. But the problem is with Akitas, they're not the easiest dogs yeah. for a junior handler to handle. So you know, it's it's it is difficult. Um, so mostly we would prefer um, young teenagers at the you know not much younger than that to handle yeah. these dogs because they're very big and they're very strong um, and it's up to the the breeders and the owners of these dogs to train the, the new generation yes they need to train them and give them some enthusiasm um, and the clubs should put on maybe a, a junior handling class most most of the junior handling is held at the big the, shows, the big shows but perhaps maybe the breed clubs could put on even one class for the youngsters so that they can take part and get that feeling of and get the love for the breed and get the get the love and maybe get a rosette to give them some enthusiasm um, because you, you need to get them started young so that they stay you yeah. know if, if they start young and they love it Stay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I could say the, the breed is a bit addictive. Uh, when yes. you start loving it, yes. you cannot get yeah. out. Like yes. you will stay there know, forever. Yeah. And it's hard. It's hard to. There's not a, a better dog. I love these dogs. Yeah, you yeah. know. Um, but you have to understand them as well. You know, they're not the dog for everybody. Yes. You know. Um, That's clear. And you have to teach people, you know, how to handle them, and you know, and, and children how to approach dogs. There's a lot. Of training for youngsters you know but even adults when they first get a new Akita and they've never had one before they need to be guided you know and hopefully the breeders that sell them the puppies will be there for them to help them you know if they've got any problems you know with the puppy you know yeah, because of course. sometimes puppies you know they go through a teenage stage and they, they might need help of and, course you know and a breeder with experience should be able to, to give that help. Yeah, and to guide the yes, new owner. Of course. And to the, now we go to the next question. What do you think, what, what would you advise the new breeders and uh, the new people in the breed? What do you, would, would you give them as an advice? What to do, what not to do? And hear from all points, breeding points, maybe behavior points, wh yeah. whatever, like some, some advices from somebody with so many experience in the breed, well, with so much experience yeah. in the breed. <coughs> well, it depends who's going to have the puppy if it's if it's for a pet person you give different advice because yeah. you know they're not going to be breeding from it so you want to get them to socialize their puppy you need to help them how to feed it properly because there's a lot goes into rearing a puppy you know and it's all about feeding and uh, rearing them and socializing them um, and maybe go to training classes they're not the best obedience dogs, but it gets them, you know, into a social circle. Um, and that's for maybe pet people. People that come into the breed and maybe they want to buy a puppy from you and eventually maybe breed from it. Well, my advice to them is, um, you know, come back to, to whoever the breeder is and ask them for their advice. Get the dog or the bitch health tested, hips and eyes, etc. Um, make sure it's healthy. And I would also, you know, say to them, you know, this is not the breed for everybody. So you have to be very selective 
who you sell your puppies to because if you sell them to the wrong people you know you can get problems I've been very lucky over the years I've sold a lot of dogs to many people and if you get the right people you don't have the problems you know and you don't get the dogs back five months later and saying this dog's too big for the house yeah and we've not got a garden and say well you have to check all this before you sell these dogs make sure it's the right kind of people um, and for the breeders what advices you have besides that you told yeah. us to keep the, the the size i was yes pay, uh, paying attention and yes. uh, the, the, the strong structure yeah um i think breeders need to focus on um well first of all you know the breed standard you know um, and not just use the dog round the corner at yeah, stud or the dog that wins the most yes yeah <laughs> it needs to be you look to see what your female needs if you're if you've got a sort of small bitch well you do need to use a bigger dog don't don't use a small mm, dog, dog owner yeah. um, if you've got a bitch maybe with big ears you need to look for a dog that's got small, small ears. ears you know you have to see what your bitch needs if she needs more bone use a big strong dog with plenty of bone you have to look at your own bitch before you decide what the best stud dog is and that's how you do it it doesn't matter whether it's the top dog or not if, yeah. it, if he's got what you need that's the dog to use yeah and uh maybe the last questions yeah. question what are your future plans and here I mean breeding plans maybe judging plans and yeah. so on well I must say I do enjoy um, breeding I, I don't breed a lot but when I breed you know it's got to be something special that I'm breeding for um, and I will continue to breed um, not often but I will continue um, I love judging um, and I love judging abroad because I love to go and see what the other countries are doing and how they're progressing. Um, I think uh, the breeders in Russia have done yeah. a great job. They've, they've came um, and they bought good bloodlines from, from UK. us. And, you know, the UK, from Matthew, myself and, and others. And they've done an amazing job with the dogs. So all praise to the Russians. Yeah. You yeah. know. Um, and I have judged in Russia and uh, I think they're really good, they're dedicated and they're, um, they, they present the dogs well, they're all well trained. Um, so that, that country has come on leaps and bounds since I started, you know, judging abroad. Yeah. Um, and I've been to other countries and it's good to see what, what road they're going down, you know, um, what bloodlines they want to use. and. Um, so I like I like to judge abroad to see the difference, and yeah. then sometimes you might see a future star or a future stud dog or something. So that's. But I'd like to continue that as long as my health. We hope. As long we as hope that you will goes. continue yeah, yeah. Uh, judging because uh, I think it's very important when you go to a dog show to have a judge that knows yeah. the breed, a judge yes. that knows and knows how to give you yeah. an advice as a contenter and yeah. knows what to tell you. And I think you should be called to as many as possible. I hope that you will, will be called be to nice, as many. Yeah. 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 But At least club shows, maybe. Yes, I hope that yeah. we will have some European club shows soon. Yeah, that because would be nice. Yeah. We don't have so many. Yeah. And the inbreeding points, you have some future plans? Um, well, <coughs> I will, I've, I've got um, a couple of daughters from Rex that I will hope to maybe meet in the future. Um, at the moment, I've got um, my young dog from uh, the Alchemist dog. Uh, a very beautiful uh, dog. I, I had the opportunity to, yeah, to see yeah. it. Well, he's, <laughs> he's, only a, uh, he's only five months at the moment, but he looks like he... He is seven. <laughs> he'll, he'll be my stud dog for the future. Um, and he's just, uh, he's just beautiful. Um, and maybe he will be mated to, to these young bitches from Rex. So I think it'll be a good combination that yeah. will be maybe for the future yeah and you can yes. line breed on racks and yes. it would be something yeah, I nice think will be, be good so, yeah. um, so the future sounds good well i hope so <laughs> as long as i stay healthy and fit yeah we hope yeah. the same yeah we hope the same yes so thank you again for offering me the opportunity i'm really proud that you accepted this interview yeah. and uh, it, it has been a great pleasure yeah. to meet you and 
to have the talk and to get your advices and uh, I hope that we will see us soon again. Maybe yes. we make some other interview or we manage to create yes. a club together and yes. uh, to, to do yes. something for the breed. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, and Alex, uh, for inviting me for this. Um, it's my pleasure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just, yeah, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, make sure to stay with us in the future. My name is Alex from Top Dogs with Alex and see you on the next episode.